at 6 p.m. we'll call the meeting to order. And the first thing I want to do is make a quick announcement that we are having problems with the YouTube live feed. So we will record this meeting and then put it up as soon as we are able to do so. All right. Okay. The first thing that we will do is the Pledge of Allegiance. Vice President Beachley. I like to report that there was no action taken in closed session. And now we will start with section 3C of the agenda, public comments. And we have one public comment card. And we have Carol Anott, and it is three minutes for a non-agenda item. Hi, I'm Carol Anat. <laughs> Welcome back to school. This year, um, parents received the El Segundo Unified School District annual notification of parent or guardian 2023-24. So in this document, there's a new paragraph that I have some questions about. Quote, any person who willfully disturbs any public school or any public school meeting is guilty of a misdemeanor and shall be punished by a fine of not more than $500. It is unlawful for any person except a parent or guardian acting towards his minor child to intentionally or to attempt to injure, intimidate, interfere by force, threat of force, physical obstruction, or nonviolent physical obstruction with any person attempting to enter or exit any public or private school grounds. So I think that basically covered um, any words or actions um, possible. So it looks to me like the school has the right to get a parent arrested for a misdemeanor and fined for up to $500. These are very vague terms. Physical obstruction, nonviolent physical obstruction. What is nonviolent physical obstruction? Standing near an entrance or an exit? I think this was. Um, interesting that this came up this year and so I want to protest it and say that this is horrible and should not be included in the contract between parents and the school. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll go to section 3D superintendent's comments. Dr. Moore. Yes, uh, thank you for your remarks this evening, Ms. Knott. Um, I will reach out and give you an email regarding the origin of that uh, particular policy. And in addition, since um, 2015, uh, and well established, the school district has also had its own civility policy as well. That's board policy 1315. So I'll be getting back to you this week. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move to section 4A, special presentations. We have the oath for our new student representative, Haley Wants. So we'd like to have Board President Wheaton administer the oath at the front podium, please. Raise your right hand. All right, and repeat after me. I, your name. I, Haley Wants. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend the Constitution, 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the State of California. The Constitution of the State of California. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. Thank you. Haley, we'd like to welcome you here to the uh, board dais. At this point, I would like to call the family up for pictures, but first, before we do that, Haley, we would all like to take a picture with you first, so let's all board members. All right, next we'll go to section 4B. And Haley, we will ask you for your student representative report. Okay. Over the summer, the senior ASB officers and junior governor had the opportunity to attend CATA Leadership Conference at UC Santa Barbara. During our week, we attended leadership training and collaborated with other student body officers from across the country. Last week, the high school hosted registration days for all students to help us prepare for the upcoming year. Also, last week, all freshmen participated in orientation led by the Link Crew. Approximately 250 students were able to learn about our school community, tour campus, and meet new friends. One new addition for the upcoming year that we are excited to share with the students is the Wellness Center. Here, students will be able to access services to support their social, emotional, well-being, and mental health. As summer comes to a close, we are excited to get the new school year started, and this year we will be filled with Hot Wheels, Barbies, and Monster High as our theme is Mattel. Very nice, thank you. Next, we'll move to Section 4C, and we have an update from the Ed Foundation. Krista Caban. Hello, this has been such a treat. I think I've seen most of you in this room about, I don't know, five or six times in the last week and a half. So that's so uncommon, but it's been so pleasurable. I mean, I, all of you, I, I enjoy having a moment to speak with all of you in person um, and talk about not just the school district, but yourselves. 
and you're all such amazing people in your own right. And I just, I'm always taken aback and inspired by your devotion to the district. So thank you for what you do. Um, I wanted to welcome Haley. It was about 30 years ago. I sat in that very seat. And here I am talking to you today. So this is really sweet. I've known Haley her whole life. So I, <laughs> it's really, I'm, I'm very touched. And I'm, I'm happy that you're here. So congratulations. Welcome. Settle in. I'm sure that'll all make you feel at home. Um, the next thing I just wanted to bring up was that, uh, so I was just at the Richmond Street Expo today, hence my t-shirt. Um, we had a great turnout there. Uh, PTA hosted it. So Ed had... We usually have a table or a booth, but I knew I'd have to break down and rush over here, so I just decided to walk around and shake hands and talk to people about Ed. Um, so it's a great, it's a great uh, expo that they put on, and all the new families get to come, find out who's, who their teacher is. Um, the kids wear labels on their shirts to say who their teacher is, so they can run around and find other classmates so they can make some friends before the first day starts. Uh, and lots of different community groups come, and so parents can find out about Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, inline hockey, lacrosse, so many different things. So it's a great um, program that was started over there a few years ago. So I was happy to be part of that. Um, Ed Foundation wants to also just let everyone know, if you already didn't, that we have uh, decided to grant the $1.8 million to the school district again this year. So we're very happy about that. Um, our theme this year is Community of Ed. So you might have noticed that on the wall on Mariposa and Center Street. Uh, we paid homage to a fellow alumni, John M Van Hammersfeld, who uh, came up with that creation many years ago. Uh, we did it with his blessing. So, <laughs> um, Also, we put on there silhouettes of members that were indicative of people that donate to our community, which is everyone old and young, big and small. Um, and I love that some of you have gone in front of the wall and posed in athletic poses and different things. It really, when I saw that after coming home, scrubbing off the paint off my hands, I just felt so fulfilled. So thank you so much for doing that. And we always appreciate you putting our, our word out there. Ed wants to thank everyone that donates to our district, whether it's a small amount or a large amount. It helps us accomplish what we want to do for our district. So we want to thank everyone, and that's why we came up with Community of Ed. We wanted everyone to know that it's, it's not just us or them, it's all of us. Everyone makes up the Ed Foundation by putting all of our resources together so that our students succeed. So the foundation, we've been busy over the summer. Uh, you know, our office staff is always working, as, as many of you are. Uh, we had a wonderful strategic planning meeting this past month uh, where we really indoctrinated some of our new board members, and they all signed on to committees. So we're ready to dig in and get going and start earning some of that $1.8 million that we want to contribute to you. Also, we had, and many of you were there, thank you so much, we had a wonderful uh, evening at Fogo de Chao, um, who was one of our partners with Ed, uh, for our SR event. And it was a lovely evening where uh, we got to hear Dr. Moore speak about the state of the school and all of the possibilities and things coming up. Uh, we had Dr. Watkins talk about our, our SR team and all the new things coming up in, with SR. And it was just a fantastic event, and I, I'm always happy to do that. I'm glad that we get to do one in the fall and in the spring, because so much happens uh, throughout the year. Um, and then the last thing that I just wanted to bring up was, uh, aside from other things that we've been working on, um, reminder that we do have Edtoberfest coming up, which is our, big, our first big fundraiser of the year, September 9th, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, come in whatever you want to wear, but be mindful that quite a few people do dress up in their dirndls or lederhosen. Uh, it's a great event to mingle and meet people, and it's a great way to kick off the year and also give back to our students. So if there's anything else, I, I'm right here if you have questions. Otherwise, that's it for me. Thank you. Next, we'll move to Section 4D, and we have an update from our employee associations. So many, so many new things that I have to pick up. All right, so 
Once again, El Segundo High School teacher Andrew Kelly. I am a longtime listener, first time caller to this thing, so we got to get that over and done with. With that being said, I want to take this time to thank the board, to thank Dr. Moore for their continued support with putting students first, whether it's with school safety or academic excellence. And with that being said, we're looking into all of us teachers, including myself, getting prepped, getting planned, and working with the students and their families for another awesome school year. So it's the very beginning. There's not much to report. So thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move to section 4E, and we have a presentation of Measure ES Series C bond. Dr. Moore, would you like to give an introduction? Yes, it's with great pleasure that I introduce Mr. Jin Kim of Piper Sandler. Uh, typically, our representative who's been here has been Tim Cardi. So Jin works directly with Tim. Uh, he was instrumental in the sale of our bond, and he actually makes sure that all the calculations add up and that everything is viable as it relates to the sale. And this is a good news report because we had wonderful success on Series C. So welcome, Jin. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Moore. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Moore, Ms. Lentz, and the rest of the cabinet. Um, as Dr. Moore introduced me, my name is Jin Kim. I'm here on behalf of Piper Sandler. All of you know my colleague, who's about a foot taller, Timothy Cardi. I work with him to provide financial adv advice to the district's Measure ES bonds. And most recently, we advised the district on taking the last final draw from the $92 million authorization. And I'm here to share with you in an effort to provide continued transparency and to continue to inform the community and the public about the activities that we've undertaken under Measure ES, a few uh, summary of information, if you will, about our uh, latest bond draw. And, and it is a good news. And I'd like to start with a slide that illustrates, and here we go. And I'd like to start with this slide. This is a slide that tracks the movement of interest rates for the past 25 years or so. And as many of you are aware, as be due to the Federal Reserve's actions to combat inflation, interest rates have gone up for the past 18 months or so. But we, what we have noticed is that the interest rates actually peaked around the end of winter, beginning of the springtime. And not only that, it actually dropped a little bit. And it is that period of time in which the district decided to sell its bonds and take the last draw to lock in the interest rates on the final bonds. Now, there are two components that make up a successful bond sale. Good timing of the bond sale is one of them, which I believe is, is good here. The second component is the credit rating. And as we did with the last bond issuance, the district elected to go and apply for bond um, rating for Moody's Investor Service. And this is a multi-step process, which we work with Dr. Moore, Ms. Lentz, in formulating a strategy and compiling a set of information to share with the credit rating analysts, who and then take that information to a larger committee to evaluate what our credit writing, rating might be. And there are about 11 potential outcomes every time a credit rating analyst reviews a credit issue, uh, credit for a bond issue like ours. And that ele those 11 potential outcomes could be categorized into three major categories. They can be the low investment grade, middle investment grade, or high investment grade. Our bond issue, which is rated a double A2 by Moody's, sits in the high investment category. Not only that, within that high investment category, we're on the higher end of that spectrum. Now, you might be asking, what are some of the reasoning why we sit so high? Well, the credit rating analysts noted many different things, but a couple of things that we like to highlight is they give us a lot of positive notes about how the district is managed. Um, it noted that we have a strong, sound financial budgets based on conservative budgeting practices. The other thing that we benefit from is that, unlike many other school districts in California, we have a very favorable enrollment trend as a result of the award-winning schools that we have here in the district. And those are very important factors when the credit rating analysts look to evaluate a bond issue. Now, coupled with good timing and the good credit rating that we have, that resulted in a very robust and favorable market reception. What I mean by that is there was a high demand for our bond issue. You know, typically we may see five, maybe six financial services firms that might be interested in any particular bond issue at any given time. 
But here, as you can see here, we have 11 financial services firms throughout the country that were interested in purchasing our $32 million of bonds. Now, you may recognize some of the names here. There are some national household names like J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Wells Fargo. And there are some regional players like UBS, RBC, and TD Securities. And then we have a good mix with some of the boutique firms like Mesero. They only specialize in buying bonds like ours. So in, what I'd like to also share and point out is the interest rates that we got here. You see all of the list of interest rates in which each of the firms submitted to purchase our bonds. And obviously we awarded the bond issue to the lowest bidder, which was UBS. The interest rate in which they provided on our bonds, that 3.89%, that is much lower than what we had actually planned. Just as a reminder, when we formulated the Measure ES bond program, we were assuming about four to four and a half percent as the approximate interest rate. That's the planning tool we use. But our actual results came in below that and we outperformed what we planned for. Now I'd like to spend the next couple slides going over some of the financial statistics or the results of the bond sale. And while I won't read off every single number here, I'll, I'd like to just point some of the highlights, go over the highlights. So we sold $32 million of bonds, and you see that true interest cost, that 3.89%. That's the average interest rate on our bond issue. And again, we were assuming 4 or 4.5% as a planning tool. In the repayment period, you see that it's an odd number. It's not the traditional 30-year repayment period that we've assumed for the past series of bonds. Well, why is it only 20-something years? Well, that's done by design because since this is a final draw on Measure ES, we wanted to match the final repayment date of this bonds to that of our existing bonds under the Measure ES so that the sunset of the Measure ES tax rate is the same all across the board for all three of the bond issues that we currently have on the books. And this last point here I'd like to highlight is the repayment ratio. You may all remember my colleague Tim Carty explaining this to you in the past, but the state of California came up with a state standard repayment ratio of four to one. Well, how we calculate that is we take the amount of bonds and we add interest to that and we divide the amount of bonds and we come up with a ratio. Now, when we conduct that computation on our bond issue, we get a repayment ratio of just under 1.8 to one. And any repayment ratio that falls below the state standard is not only a demonstration of a successful bond sale, but it's also a demonstration of good governance and good stewardship of public funds. So I would say these metrics are what we use to determine whether or not a bond issue was successful or not. And then all the numbers to the right there, that's a very detailed uh, repayment schedule. You can just peruse at the amount of, you can just peruse through the chart and that's the amount uh, that we will be repaying from the tax levies collected from the community members every year. Now there's just one more slide that I'd like to go over with you. And these are the itemized dollar amounts of where the funds are sitting today. We sold $32 million of bonds at the top. Now because of the high demand of our bond issue, many of the investors were willing to pay a premium on our bond issue. What does that mean? So for every dollar bonds we sold, investors were willing to pay us $1 plus a premium of let's say 10 cents on every dollar that we sold. And that amount aggregated to about $2.4 million. Now that amount is set aside in a separate account and a special account at LA County for the exclusive benefit of the taxpayers. So when LA County sits down to compute the tax rate for the community members, what they will do is they will calculate the required amount and they will subtract out this $2.4 million and give a credit to the taxpayers. So for instance, if we're targeting a $40 tax rate per $100,000 of assessed valuation, you may actually end up seeing a tax rate that's below that $40 because you have that $2.4 million of credit sitting at the LA County. After we set that money aside, what we do is we pay all of the costs related to the bond issuance. First, we pay UBS. That's the firm that bought the bonds from the district. So they take $140,000 right off the top. And the balance, that 215000 that money is used to pay for costs that are related to preparing the legal documents, that are related to securing the credit rating, and other ancillary costs like purchasing statistical information to include in the documents and to advertise the bonds for sale. And I've actually provided a breakdown of all of those costs in the following slide. 
and I won't bore you with the details, but I, I included it in my presentation so that you could peruse it at your time. Now, I you know I went over a lot of information. I try to be very judicious with the time here. So I'll, before I conclude my presentation, I'll open it up to any questions that you might have. Any questions from the board? Absolutely. Sure. I don't have any questions because thankfully I've been through this process a few times now, but I'm just excited that you're here and we're here. Oh, thank you. At this final sale. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is amazing. So thank you for your work this summer, everybody that, that went to the effort of selling this bond and bringing back this great news for us today. It's, it's very exciting. Great. We look forward to spending it reasonably, smartly, quickly, feasibly, all those good <laughs> things to, to save money as best we can. So thank you. Perfect. Well said, Tracy. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll move to the consent section of the agenda. May I have a motion? Uh, polls. At a poll. Okay. What would you like to pull? Yeah, so you can then motion on the nons. Uh, I need to pull and recuse uh, B and C. Thank you. May I have a motion? I'll move approval of A and D through N N. Second. Okay, you got to vote oh, on this. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can stay for this one. I know. Any discussion? All right, Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. Okay. All board members in favor? Aye. 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 Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. May I have another motion? I'll move approval on consent agenda items five A, I'm sorry, five B and C. Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor? Aye. Aye. Those who oppose? And we have one, excuse me, motion carries four to zero with one recusal. Okay, there you have it. All right, now we'll move to section six of the agenda action items. We'll move to 6A. Frank? In accordance with Board of Education policy number 3290, the Board of Education may accept gifts as long as there is no conflict with the education code or other public laws. The school district has received generous donations. These donations do not conflict with any education code our public laws regarding acceptance of gifts. The gifts have been received from Digital Promise and two gifts from Schools First Federal Credit Union. And I move approval. I'll second. Any discussion? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor? Aye. Aye. Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. Next we'll move to action item 6B. Dr. Moore? Yes, we bring forward uh, to you this evening our agreement with El Camino College. Uh, and this allows for seamless pathways from the high school to the community college and students can um, uh, earn dual enrollment credit. So I'm very pleased this particular uh, agreement we are offering Japanese which I think is very exciting because we have very you know limitations as far as our languages uh, in addition it'll help supplement our sign language program uh, and then we have our engineering pathway courses all in this agreement so uh, Ms. Janicek worked with El Camino and uh, we are both very pleased to see this as a three-year agreement typically they have gone with uh, bringing this on an annual basis, and so we're very
pleased to have it come and uh, continue this partnership with El Camino. Uh, and each year this fall, they have the high school principal and the superintendent attend at breakfast. Uh, so they're wonderful partners with our district and we look forward to continuing to explore possibilities with them. I'll move approval. Second. Any discussion? I just have a comment. I just want to say thank you for working on this with El Camino because, you know, being a small district, we can't offer every class for everybody that everybody wants to do, but what great ways that you've looked to expand this. And, you know, again, like I'm grateful for our SoCal Rock relationship because we can do so much more with our partners that can offer more in a, in a different space than we can. Local, but different. And uh, I'm grateful for the work that you do to keep finding these opportunities. So thank you. And I will just say as SoCal Rock representative, they are also working with El Camino and some of the other local districts. They're, they're working really hard right now to try to build some partnerships. So I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of that as well. I'm curious, I wanted to ask Kaylee if she knows anybody who's enrolled in the Japanese class. Um, I do not know if anyone. Okay, <laughs> I just was curious. <laughs> yeah. Keep your ears open. I will. Right? <laughs> so an annual agreement is great, but I have to say we're incredibly grateful for a three-year agreement. That's a great strategic move, so thank you. All right. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor? Aye. Aye. Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. Next, we'll move to action item six C. Dr. Moore. Uh, yes, I bring before you this evening a uh, three year agreement with Atkinson Andelson, Loyal, Ruta, and Romo. Uh, we have uh, been with legal services with them uh, for many, many years and would like to continue in that. Um, capacity and recommend approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next, we'll move to action item 6D. <coughs> Dr. Moore. Yes, we bring forward another three-year agreement, this time with seven mindsets and base education. Um, uh, we did not renew with Panorama Education uh, as it relates to surveys for our families and would like to shift to uh, this provider. This provider also will be able to provide uh, learning modules for our students in the area of social emotional learning as well. So we saw this as a tremendous resource for our wellness centers uh, as students want to go in as well as uh, tools for teachers toolboxes as they work on a specific topic with their class. So um, uh, in uh, the context of the curriculum. So uh, Dr. Plotkin has done great research on this and this would be budgeted through our mental health funding that we receive. I recommend approval. May I have a motion? I'll move approval. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I have a quick question. I, this is, you may not know the answer yet because we haven't approved this to be able to answer it yet, but I'm just curious if there will be any sort of continuity between some of the questions we've asked in Panorama in the past so that we can have a baseline to work from or are we just starting fresh? How do you, how do you see us managing our way through that? Yeah, we, we can align, uh, so you can build custom questions. There's, there's more components. There's also a, a component that it's a, like a student wellness check-in, so we can measure check-in over, over time. But yeah, uh, they have a research-based survey platform that we can align with, uh, with where Panorama, what Panorama was asking. I love the bonus wellness. Personali again, we're all about personalizing as much, we, as much as we can. So I love this new opportunity. I was just curious about, you know, when you start, you do surveys and you want to be baseline, see how we're doing. Okay, thank you. So Tracy, that's a great point. I didn't think about that. While we do like to customize, you're right, and you would know more than anyone about surveys. It is great to have the ability to compare to make sure that we are still trending in the right direction. So, all right. Any other discussion? Okay. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. 
Next, we have action item 6E, Dr. Moore. Yes, Expanded Learning Opportunities Program is the program that uh, we have been able to um, fully um, uh, envelop in our TLC program. So the Learning Connection has been able to be funded and enriched with Expanded Learning Opportunities um, op uh, programming and funding. And we are very pleased that uh, Ms. Guadalupe worked very hard on this plan. And this is uh, supporting our students after school. And there are other things on here um, that the board approved as it related to programming on the consent, uh, which included things such as PS Arts and Code Rev Kids. Uh, so TLC is no longer just a place, but it's a place where people are getting really high quality um, supports through outside providers as well. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item 6F, Dr. Moore. Yes, once again, the board needs to uh, take action as it relates to um, spending um, for the discretionary block grant related to instructional materials, arts, and music. So um, as you know, we are a, uh, fiscally conservative and wait for clarity from the state as it relates to what the funding is for, um, did we receive the funding, are there going to be any take backs which occur sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have done all of our due diligence and recommend a plan before you this evening that provides arts and music supports which include professional development, uh, release time for articulation, uh, an additional option, and then we have uh, funding for technology in the future. So uh, we uh, feel that uh, the plan will meet our needs moving forward. And uh, Ms. Linz is happy to take any further questions. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I'd like to ask um, if you could give us some examples of the classroom educational technology, the new equipment that uh, may be contemplated in this? So um, Mr. Ghanem and Dr. Plot Kim will be leading a um, technology committee for the district to get input from our sites on what is needed in the classrooms. Um, in general, it might be to replace some of our one-to-one -one devices as they reach end of life, but we definitely want to get uh, teacher and staff input before making those decisions. I don't know if you guys want to add anything. Because some of the stuff they have in the classrooms is cool right now. You should see it. <laughs> oh, some of the stuff they have in the classrooms right now that we've been able to provide the teachers, I wish I had as a teacher. I mean, it's amazing stuff that projects on the wall that can write on the, I mean, it's crazy. It's like out of a spy movie, so pretty cool stuff. All right. Thank you. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item 6G, Dr. Moore. Yes, I'm just going to preview items G and H together. Um, both these items have to do with meeting uh, specific needs for special education individualized education plans. Move approval. For, do we have to do G and H separately? Separately. For uh, item G. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved five to zero. Okay. I'll have move on six H. Or unless you want to, you need, do we need to read it out? I, okay. Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item six I, Dr. Moore. 
Uh, yes, uh, item I is to uh, make an adjustment and an amendment to the salary schedule for certificated management. Um, uh, earlier, uh, a month or two ago, I did a salary study for two of the cabinet level positions and uh, looked at comparable districts within our South Bay. It has been a practice of the board to ensure that uh, all employees are at a median level uh, and discovered that our assistant superintendent position was uh, below that level. And so in order to bring that to the middle, I'm recommending a 4.47% uh, adjustment in that salary, as well as that same salary increase for the chief business official to reflect the additional job responsibility she has assumed as it relates to Measure ES facilities and maintenance. I move approval. Second. Any discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Okay. And next we have action item 6J. Dr. Moore? Yes, this is a very important uh, board action that you take because this action allows the district to remain in compliance as it relates to credentials. So I want to commend Dr. Gooden's um, efforts in this area because last year you approved this item and this item along with all of the other work she does with credentials led to no misassignments. Zero misassignments in human resources is the golden ticket that's hidden. Uh, people don't tell you how to get it. Uh, they actually are a little bit of obstructionists, uh, kind of like LCAP, Ms. Janicek. Uh, but we actually had zero misassignments, and that is truly uh, a real uh, area to be commended. So this is an important board action. We bring it on an annual basis, and this makes sure that um, when the creden teacher credentialing for California looks at it, that each person matches up with what their qualifications, experience, and credential are with what they're teaching. I recommend approval. I'll move approval. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. I just um, want to applaud the team, uh, whoever, yeah. <laughs> whoever looked at all these nooks and crannies, because I've never seen the zero, I don't yeah. think, ever. Um, so, yay. Yeah, so uh, can you just give some clarity on when a teacher is a single subject teacher and they can uh, be permitted to teach a second subject? What, what's the, uh, the rules on that? So most of these items that you'll see on here are for elective classes. Um, so the state of California will say, for example, um, uh, our, our design class that we have at the middle school, they consider that class to be labeled as a computer science class. So in order for a teacher that doesn't have the highest level of a math credential to teach it, the board has to authorize and say, we understand that looking at the job description and the course outline for the design class is in alignment with what a math teacher could teach. So that's what those pieces are. The other ones are, um, for example, if a teacher has a chemistry credential and they have enough units that they've taken enough biology classes, they could teach a class like biology. So our teachers are all qualified to teach the classes that they are, but it's just um, we have to bring to the board's attention and make sure that the board is okay with you know some of these just minor tweaks and adjustments to make sure that everything aligns up because it all has to do with the code. So the teacher's code has to meet exactly what the credential is. So it's specifically allowable under education code to various sections as well as the code of regulations title five. No objection for me, I'm a teacher, so. You, know. <laughs> you were inching. Yeah. I, I was always just glad that my credential worked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. this, this solves a lot of problems. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> Haley, may we have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, please say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next, we have action item 6K. Dr. Moore. I enthusiastically bring before you the Alder Agreement uh, for this school year. Uh, we're very pleased to have two teacher residency candidates. 
um, and they will be at the elementary school. And our program, we've been very successful in bringing back and hiring everyone that works under this program. So um, we're very pleased that we've been able to invest in these uh, individuals and that they are actually have or uh, are giving back to our students. Uh, for example, this year we have Amy Grant at Center Street, and we were also able to bring back Dina Strunk at the middle school. So, uh, and of course we have Elena Wagner as well. And, uh, oh. May I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh, well, two. One is um, I'm hoping that we would meet these two individuals one day. Maybe you can invite them to a board meeting. Um, now, uh, is it my understanding that they are um, usually members of the community that are invited for this, or is it open? So we went go through a pretty rigorous process. Um, we look to the school community to, um, to get candidates. So we first go to our classified staff to say, are there any classified staff that are interested in applying? And then also we send it out to parents, we send it out through social media, you know, are there community members um, that are working here? So everyone that we've hired thus far has had some connection to El Segundo Unified, whether it's living in the community, working through as a classified staff. Um, our two that we brought in this year, Chloe, she was a teacher at TLC, the after school program. And then um, Iliad was the, um, is the, uh, the lacrosse coach at the high school. So both of them had, you know, we're already committed to our district and we're excited to come in and move up into the teaching ranks. That, that's why I was going to discuss with you that I'm going to be abstaining from vote because of my relationship with uh, a community member oh, okay. that, is, that is one of these candidates. So. Yeah, I just want to say we've had some amazing people come up through this program. Like, thank goodness that we started doing this five, was it five years ago. Dr. Ferris, I think, first brought it in, right? And so thank you for continuing to find great candidates because it's exciting that they come in and learn from our teachers and learn our students from the beginning. So it's wonderful. I mean, assuming we approve it right now. I, I have a, sorry, another question. Um, are we capped at two or because it seems like that's the n number we seem to always have? Well, it's tough because you have to identify what your needs are going in. And so because we're a small district, um, we have to take a look at, okay, what vacancies are we going to have? And this all has to happen pre, before the year starts. And so that's why we kind of selected elementary this year. We have done special education in the past. We had, um, uh, you know, other areas that we've considered math. We had math teachers um, so we had chemistry, um, so it just depends, but we have to forecast six months ago mm -hmm. for what, what we're doing right now and who gets selected. So it makes it a little tricky, um, so we've got to look at, like, where will the vacancies be? That's the interesting thing about education is that there oftentimes is a lot of forecasting and crystal ball holding because you have to anticipate needs and what we know needs change. So, all right, any additional discussion? Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries four to zero with one abstention. Next, we have action item 6L. Dr. Moore? Yes, as we have uh, participated in other joint powers agreement, this is actually an agreement in which we're in a coalition with other school districts. Um, the district that is providing the service is Palos Verdes, and it is uh, for Beginning Teacher Support Assessment, or BITSA as it's known, another acronym. Um, this is a program for our first and second year teachers, and Dr. Gooden has identified that this year we'll actually have 24 teachers participating in the BITSA program. So um, this uh, is an important function. Uh, being a small district, this is a service that uh, is very regulatory in nature, uh, so it requires somebody with a level of expertise to ensure that all compliance uh, is um, met. So I recommend approval. So moved. I'll second. 
Any discussion? J just having been a BITSA support provider, um, I mean, this is something, yeah, it's hard for the teachers with one more thing on their plate as a new teacher, but it's also gives them so much information um, in being a better teacher and understanding. And I don't, I hopefully we have, you know, teachers that are going to, teachers in our district that are going to be able to take 24 new teachers in and mentor them um, because it, it is an amazing program. So, and, and it is also state mandated, so we need to get it done. Just want a quick question. Do I have a family member that's one of those BITSA members? I'll be abstaining from this void. <laughs> Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries four to zero with one abstention. Next, we have action item 6M. Dr. Moore? Uh, yes, we bring before you a revised job description for the um, uh, learning connection lead teacher. So the, the word teacher is uh, used to describe the fact that the person has somewhat of a leadership role, but this is a classified service. This is not a certificated teacher. Uh, so they are providing child um, care uh, type of responsibilities. And so we have aligned our requirements for the job um, based on the industry standards within the South Bay uh, and what everyone else is doing. So I'm very pleased this has been a growing program. So Dr. Gooden and Ms. Guadalupe worked very, very hard at the start of the school year to um, increase. We have nine classes now at each school, not just at one school, at each school. So. Um, uh, what we have found is our families are not only just uh, wanting to come to their neighborhood school, but they're also needing child care. And so uh, we're very pleased to have this revision because this will help us fill positions and um, maintain uh, who we need moving forward. Okay. I'll move approval. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I just like seeing, again, like the focus on TLC. And, and yes, Ms. Guadalupe and her team have been trying to keep up with the demands mm -hmm. in a really intense way. And to see this kind of support also, it's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's amazing and wonderful. Glad we can really be there for our community. Again, trying to keep up with the needs as much as possible, but really boosting it this way. It's awesome. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item six in. Dr. Moore. Our CBO is requesting your approval this evening to participate in the Smart Meal Study in California. Um, and this is requested by our state uh, to capture um, information as it relates to the universal school meal program. So we would like to support them in this program and gathering the information they need and recommend approval. May I have a motion? So moved. May Second. I have a Excellent. Any discussion? Uh, question, is there any cost to the district for this? Uh, no, there's no cost to the district. It's funded by the state. And food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next, we have action item 6O, Dr. Moore. Uh, yes, we bring forward uh, approval ratification uh, regarding purchasing technology equipment. Um, this is specific to uh, Chromebooks, so for our new classrooms at Center and at Richmond Street Schools. So uh, we have been able to staff appropriately, and our classrooms 
uh, all have credentialed teachers and we needed devices to support our students and their learning. So I recommend approval. I'll, I'll move approval. Second. Any discussion? Okay. No video <laughs> games on them. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item 6P, Dr. Moore. I uh, bring before you the proposed board policies, exhibits, and administrative regulation updates that were recommended by the California School Boards Association. All the policies from the information pending action at the last meeting to this meeting are the same that were posted with the exception of independent study the proper one is put here. Uh, there was one um, slight variation that needed to be changed, and obviously you've reviewed that um, to see what that might be. So I recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, if I could just mention to the public, you know, these are all vetted through CSBA and their legal teams. So regulatory-wise, when new judicial precedent comes up or cases are being decided they're adjusting language to encompass those new rulings and the state legislature's a b actions so um, you know sh people should go through them kind of look at them um, but it's not done at our own benefit or we're not trying to change language or make rules that don't exist as a statewide structure in or in ed code so um you know, if people find some of the language, you know, that takes them down a road. Well, it's all been legally vetted, so they could just look at them. Reading. Well said, thank you. Yeah, and I do appreciate that this was summer reading for us because yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. So uh, you, you teed us up at a very good time to have the time and space to go through these in detail. So thank you. Yeah, on that note, I'd like to thank Hurricane Hillary for. Uh, keeping me inside on Sunday <laughs> so I could read through all of this. So I'm assuming no running for you on Sunday. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. Next we have action item 6Q, Dr. Moore. All right, just like households, school districts also have waste. And so we bring a renewal for uh, Ware Disposal for you this evening, as Ware was the low bidder. And this is a contract for three years. I'll move, move oh, go ahead. Move approval. I'll second. Any discussion? I'm, I'm just shocked at the price difference. Like, I mean, are they forgetting to pick up something? Are they not coming? Like, what, 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 why? This is shocking, but in a good way. Yeah, I think, you know, what Ware had, Ware is our current provider, so they had the benefit of understanding, maybe understanding the district a little bit better. Yeah. Um, they were, they were in the last round of bids, also significantly right. lower than the, set, than the next bidder, so um, they just tend to be low bidders. Motion to approve. Oh, we do that? No, Haley, do that. may I have your preferential vote? But thank you. Yeah. Aye. All board members in favor say aye. 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 Those who oppose, motion carries five to zero. And lastly, we have action item 6R, Dr. Moore. We bring before you this evening a um, recommendation regarding bus transportation agreements for next year. So. Um, as uh, we considered this item, uh, Chief Business Official Kim Linz took a look at what were other districts doing in the area uh, because last year there were a couple of instances where availability became an issue. And so knowing that, uh, she um, kind of recalibrated her thinking and uh, worked with her network of CBOs and determined that multiple providers would be the way to go um, to ensure that um, our district um, students would have access, whether it would be for athletic purposes, field trips, 
uh, or school events that require transport. So um, I appreciate her due diligence on this and recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? This really smart idea to have multiple vendors that we can have a relationship with considering there's a shortage. Mm -hmm. um, we went through it, you know, trying to get buses and for the kids and it's a nightmare. So having the ability to outreach to different vendors makes it really easy and really benefits our district since we don't have our own bus yard. Mike, you're absolutely right that it is beneficial because we have options, but that also gives us leverage in terms of seeing who has the best price for yeah. us. So uh, it's another added benefit yeah. of proactively making sure that we get this in order. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Haley, may I have your preferential vote? Aye. All board members in favor, say aye. 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 Those who oppose? Motion carries five to zero. Now we'll move to section seven of the agenda for information pending action items. Dr. Moore? Uh, yes, for item A, we have a first review of uh, board policy 430 regarding our comprehensive local plan for special education. Uh, and so that is there and will be brought back uh, at the September 12th meeting. And in addition, we have on item B, uh, just a first review of the schedule of fees for use of school facilities. So with the addition of our beautiful El Segundo Middle School Gymnasium, uh, we have established fees for that building. Uh, in addition, we've made a fee adjustment for the El Segundo Middle School field. Uh, prior to that, there were two different fields on the fee schedule. Um, and so we want to have the proper fee based on the square footage that people are getting uh, at a uh, fair rate. Uh, and then additionally, we added instructional technology support staff to the schedule of fees because we have wonderful state-of-the-art technology in our gymnasium. Uh, and so we want to make sure if an outside user were in there and they were going to use the technology, that proper staff is there to ensure that it is uh, taken care of properly and used properly. Those will come back at the September 12th meeting. All right, next we'll move to section eight, reports, informational calendar. Tomorrow's the first day of school. You can feel the excitement and optimism in the air. Look at them back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we have item 8B, the financial statements posted for the high school ASB. Nothing to add. And now we'll move to the announcements section of the agenda. We have 9A board member reports. We'll start with member Tracy miller Zarnicki. Hey, I'll make this quick. Uh, welcome back and welcome anew to people that are just joining us this year great group of new staff that some of us met this week and you're included in the welcome anew to this whole thing that you're doing so thank you for for being part of us up here also um i just want to tell you all that uh while we've had our break i've not had a break with la county trustees association and our executive board has met twice to plan programming and leadership academy and actually some social mixers which will help us and also some legislative folks come together in person in a few occasions this year. So you'll get emails and nagged by me to come join me for some of these things. First one being September 18th and it's virtual, super easy. You don't have to get in the car to drive anywhere in LA County, we'll just log in. So I will tell you more about that when we get closer. Um, exciting stuff at the high school, which I, I won't go into detail, I'll let someone else talk about the steel topping because that was fun and exciting to see that next step at that site. Um, we had a really thoughtful facility advisory committee meeting, which also I won't say all about because I mean, I, don't, I hate taking everybody's thunder. But quickly, uh, we, we spent a lot of good time talking about the next phase, which that means finally getting to do some work at Eagle's Nest and Arena and some of our district facilities that, that everybody uses. So that was a very helpful meeting to help plan for what 
the board is actually going to talk about in detail next week for another special meeting. Um, also, I just want to say I watched the webinar that Center Street hosted to talk about their new protocols this year. Very well thought out, very well spelled out with graphics and geographical, numerical, and color coding configurations. So I think that all of our learners at different levels and different um, understandings have an opportunity to get it. And I know that our teachers and staff and, and, and security and safety assistants are going to help make that happen. Um, but what I'm more excited about is the fact that on my way here tonight, Center Street was hopping with energy. I came by the Kinder Playground and I was like, oh, can I detour and go over there instead of coming to have a meeting here? Which, you know, I love to do that. But there was so much energy coming off that playground with new families meeting and greeting each other and finding out what their, what their you know, student classrooms would be. And, you know, or they found out last week, but finding who's in their class together in person was so exciting. So I know uh, Krista spoke to what happened at Richmond, but I'll tell you, I saw some exciting center stuff going on today. And it was a wonderful boost to see us get ready to go. Um, thank you again to the Ed Foundation for your, the Superintendent round, ta uh, round Table kickoff, which Dr. Moore did a lovely job presenting uh, where we're all at. And um, I bought my tickets to Oktoberfest. I hope all of you who are of that age, not you, um, have also bought those tickets for uh, September 9th. Uh, looking forward to that event with our community. And I'm just going to send out good continued mojo for our El Scandal Little League who won tonight. I think Dr. maybe uh, Meredith will give us the score if she found out by the time she gets to her. Um, but uh, go, go, guys. It makes us proud to see you out there. Oh, Steve might know. 10, 9, 9 to 3? Okay. Well done. So keep going, guys. I know you got to grind through every night, every night, but we're all rooting for you from home. So that's it for me. Thank you all, and we'll see you all tomorrow out and about for the first day of school. Well, I'm very grateful that uh, Daima gave me ad hoc committees that didn't meet during the summer. So <laughs> I have very little to report except uh, that I want to wish all the teachers and administrators and students uh, welcome back. And uh, I missed you guys at all the uh, uh, daily uh, social events because I had my own to go to for professional development. And so I uh, want to wish everyone just a, a great start of the year and uh, look forward to another uh, fruitful year of El Segundo Unified School District being on top here. We're doing a great job. Um, things are looking bright for us. So I'm not going to go through all the events Tracy and I went to together because <laughs> she already mentioned them. <laughs> but there's uh, uh, one thing that I would like to mention is um, our Ed Foundation. And Krista mentioned it earlier that... Um, we have the new wall at Center Street, which is amazing. And um, at the uh, All Hands meeting yesterday, um, the uh, Ed Foundation gave new T-shirts to all the teachers. And uh, September 1st will be where your Ed Foundation T-shirt day. And uh, I think it's a great reminder and a moment for everybody now that we're starting a new year, which is also the start of the Ed Foundation's um, next pledge to our district that it's a great time to consider donating to Ed or attending one of the events. Um, the Ed Foundation uh, receives funds from four different streams. One is uh, programs with the Academy. Uh, one is um, our business partners. And um, well, I'm blanking on one, but <laughs> but the uh, the big one is our community support, and that's where um, individuals in our community can step up to the plate and support our district by giving a donation to the foundation. And that uh, foundation is run um, uh, with a very bare bones staff, and uh, you can be assured that. A very high percentage of the money you donate goes directly to programs in our school district. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that um, it's been uh, really great for me to see our kids, our band, and our cheerleaders, and our um, football team out on the field uh, early morning and late at night 
And I've been there both times, and it seems like every time I go there, I see Mike Wagner. <laughs> and uh, It's true. I live there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my point is that um, we have some amazing volunteers in our community, uh, both in school sports and in our other activities, as which I think Meredith is going to mention in a minute. But um, these are heroes. Yeah, well, our little league team. Uh, yeah, these these are our heroes in our community, and Mike, you are one of them. But there's many more. There's, um, like I said, there's the the cheer, and the band, and uh, people really step up to the plate and make our community an amazing place to live. And I just want to thank all of you. So I'm going to go ahead and start with those activities because I did spend a tremendous amount of time this summer following the 12 and under Little League kids. I followed them through the district, went to every game, went through sectional every game. Um, and then when they got to San Bernardino for the, for the division, um, I knew I was going to miss one because I was going to be in Kansas City. And I told the coach, because the year before I missed one and they lost. And I said, that's it. I'm not going if I can't go to all of them. He said, thank you which he appreciated. Um, and so then they won, and now they are in Pennsylvania, and they just won tonight. Lost a tough one last night, but won tonight. They play tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So we need to keep cheering on our, our El Segundo um, Little League. Um, I did not have the summer off with my ad hoc duties. Um, I had a couple of SoCal Rock meetings. Uh, I had one in July. Um, it was our superintendent's first meeting, so he was very excited. Um, so excited that we're doing a new strategic plan and new governance, of which we spent three hours last Saturday working on. Um, the good news is, with all of this that is going on, we are headed in an amazing direction with SoCal Rock. I am so excited to be part of this amazing team. Um, and to, to, they just, they want to hear from our kids. They want to know, you know, what classes they should be offering, um, how to make things better. Um, they really, really are open um, to making this the amazing program that I really do think it is going to become. So I'm excited about that. Um, I helped paint the wall, which was really fun. So part of the lettering was mine and, and a little bit of the pink. D didn't mess it up or anything. Um, the topping ceremony was so cool. Like that's just, I came back a day early just so I could write my name on a beam. My sister was like, you're doing what? And I said, I'm writing my name on a beam. So exciting. Just watching the buildings go up has been amazing. Um, I drove by Richmond today, and it's like, wow. Um, the new teacher meeting, I was, I, wow. I just, I've been doing new teacher meetings for years um, as EST, ESTA representative. And to sit in that room as a, as a school board member and welcome the new teachers to this district, knowing that you know they're coming in to, to help our kids and to teach our kids. Well, I got a little, I got a little teary-eyed almost. She almost made me cry over here. Um, it, was, it was a really, really touching event for me. And I am going to be spending my day tomorrow for the first day of school. I know this is going to shock some of you, but I'm going to the middle school. And I might get a little teary-eyed there as well. Um, the SR event we talked about was great. All hands was amazing. The speaker was so funny. It was having gone again to so many hands-on meetings. Um, often where we're looking at test scores and, and other things, just to be able to sit there and be entertained um, 
and motivated to go out and have the best year that we can have was was amazing. So thank you to Dr. Moore for helping set that up and for the PTA Council for, for flipping the, the bill on that. And I think that's all I got. Well, it looks like everything was covered. I just want to clarify when she said I almost made her cry at the uh, new teacher's orientation. It was because I just stated the obvious for all of our board members while we sit here and volunteer, it's just the next level of our dedication to this community. Prior to having these seats, each one of us have had substantial, held substantial roles within the community of, of doing our individual parts to make the community better. So that's the tears, nothing else. <laughs> um, but we, none of that at all, no. Uh, we did have 28 new teachers and one counselor, so that was great. And you're right, the excitement in the room was it's beautiful because you know that we are welcoming new life into our district and you know that these individuals are going to bring with them whatever experience, whatever excitement, and they will just continue to replenish the spirit and that's really what we want here. All right, so we have our first day of school tomorrow and we are all very excited. I do want to say, just going back to the new teacher orientation for Dr. Moore and her cabinet, there is something to be said about the way that you introduce an employee to your space. They say that the first introduction, how you handle it for the onboarding makes the life of the employee. So the fact that we put them all in the room and when you walked around and you saw the cluster of Center Street teachers, Richmond Street, Richmond Street School teachers, the middle school and the high school, you saw that they already had their village and they say that you want to have a friend at work. Is there someone that you can consider a friend, just someone that you can turn to? And the way that we I wouldn't even say artificially, but the way that we strategically structure that to ensure success from day one is the way that we govern the school district in general. Every step behind every decision, bef behind every anything that we do, we make sure that that extra step is taken, that extra thought is infused with care, with support, and most importantly, we put our heart in it. And I think that's what makes us, excuse me, let me correct myself, I know that's what makes us special. So because my fellow board members already discussed everything, I am going to turn it over to, let's see. Well, I don't know that you have a, yeah, we don't have anything. So okay, we'll give it to Dr. Moore, 9C. Student board member report. Haley, did you have anything you wanted oh. to talk about? How, how did, was this what you thought it was? <laughs> um, yeah, it was great. Thank you all. And not only myself, but all of us are super excited for tomorrow, first day. Um, and we're very excited for the senior sunrise in the morning as well. All right, nice. great, great. It's a wonderful new tradition, right? Okay, great. All right, well, welcome Haley. We're happy to have you on board and look forward to you weighing in on issues. Um, please also um, extend my thanks and appreciation to the El Segundo High School cheer team. They did an amazing job, really uplifting the entire event and welcoming all our teachers back. And then the other group that we did not recognize, we hit Ed Foundation, we hit PTA Council, but the Connect to Credit Union. Uh, they provided a fabulous breakfast for us, um, so definitely want to thank Connecta, as well as for our district luncheon, to thank everyone for their summer work that we had, all of our classified staff and our administrators. Um, we had the school's first credit union provide a wonderful pizza party for all of us, so we're very appreciative to those. So since the last board meeting, I just wanted to report to the board that obviously this evening you saw our ESTA and CSEA uh, representative report on the board agenda. I appreciate Dr. Gooden pulled several different samples for me to consider, and that seemed to be the best place for it to land. And then it is, an, it is a placeholder. So we might have times where 
no one is deciding to say anything and we might have times where uh, both groups show up so uh, it's there they know it's there they've been invited to um, speak should they choose to uh, so we look forward to continuing that tradition moving forward so as we adjusted the agenda to reflect the board action to align practice with the education code and board bylaw um, we created a new public comment card uh, that we utilized this evening uh, we've adjusted our agenda accordingly and then lastly we did go ahead and set up our uh, one board email so I will be communicating that to the community uh, in writing next week and the actual email address is all one word board of education lowercase at esusd.net so thank you mr gauna for uh arranging that uh behind the scenes and then um just what a great all hands event everybody coming together uh you could hear the laughter you could see a lot of smiles um but i'm saddened to say you know um in my final thoughts that recently i had several employees actually reach out to me with some serious concerns regarding posts that had been shared um, on local social media. So in some instances, the person who shared the post, was it wasn't even about them. It was about a colleague. Uh, but it affected them. So these concerns really caused me to pause and reflect. And, you know, words are very powerful. And they can be tools for good or they can be tools to hurt. And in this instance, in a few select posts shared with me, they, they inflicted hurt. So I'd just like to take a moment to share that our El Segundo Unified School District employees are unsung heroes. They're here as public servants. Um, and whether the employee is a classified staff member, a teacher, a manager, an administrator, these individuals are here, present, for and in service to students. In service to students. We're here because we care about kids. So as we move forward and pull together as a school district at a time of renewal, let's all renew and navigate the new school year together. And we need to operate from a foundation of mutual respect. We need to start with the foundation of assume good will. Let me say it again, assume good will. Because this simple adage, when you apply it, before you press send or before you post, goes a long way and can impact how we treat one another when a concern arises. So we greatly, as a cabinet team, as your superintendent, I look forward to working together with this community on behalf of all students. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we'll move to section 10 of the agenda. We do not have to recess to close session. So I will call this meeting to close at 723.